Hello, welcome to the Six Second Farmstead channel. Uh, this evening, I'm going to talk about building hive bases. Uh, this is the hive base style that I currently utilize, that I came up with. Um, uses some eighth inch hardware cloth for screening for varroa mite drops. Um, use chloroplast board, uh, slides of chloroplast to reduce the uh, airflow in the bottom there. Um, I have a cut sheet of materials there um, that I'll include in the description and on the on the video here um, but let's go ahead and uh, get started explaining how this all works here uh, so my base here medium this is a medium uh, high body here or honey super uh, you can use, uh, use a deep but I use 10 frame equipment here so this is 10 frame uh, situated for 10 frames um, boxes here uh, I have a area here that you can use that's for uh, entrance reducers or um, your feeders, front feeders here that'll fit inside here. This is got screened in. Uh, glass board here, in the back. Uh, two purposes: you can use it for mite counts, um, create some co cooking oil here for your mite drops when you treat for hives, especially when I do my oxalic acid treatments slide this in here to help seal this in um, but also for the winter I can put this in here and reduce the airflow to getting in there and secures the bees helps uh, helps maintain warmth there um, I have uh, like I said I have a cut sheet for these things here so we'll get, get started here and set the boards out and explain what we we'll do with those okay there are 11 pieces of wood that need for cut out for here. I'll explain some are, are the same dimension, just need two of them, like the sides and some of these uh, screen mounting boards and uh, the bottom guides for the chloroplast there. Um, when I cut these things out, I actually cut out multiple things, multiple. When I uh, was cutting these out, I actually cut it out enough to make five of these high bases here. So this is explain how to build one of them here. So what we're gonna do is set these aside and we're going to get started. So we're going to take the two sides here. We're going to set them side by side here. I need about a three quarter inch line. So um, I'm going to take my three quarter by three quarter boards, one of these, set it to the top here, set it flush, and then take a pencil and draw a line all the way down this, both pieces. That's done. Now I'm going to set these to the side here. The line faces upwards and into the center here. I'm going to take, I'll, I label all these pieces here, um, especially when I made multiple of these here, so I know that I'm going to get mixed up there. So what we'll do is start with the rear bottom piece here. I'm going to take some glue, glue the sides of these in, and I'm going to use my uh, 18 gauge air, uh, air compressor. I'm going to use uh, two inch nails and inch and a quarter inch nails. Uh, for this project. So the first part here, I'm going to set this down to the bottom, to the rear, flush up the rear of this, and I'm going to shoot in a few, a few nails to secure it in place. Make sure you don't shoot it into your fingers. And I'll put another one in there. So I've got some misfeeds or misshots. And do the same thing. Just flush up the back of it and shoot some nails in. We're gonna do is turn this around. Makes it easier to work around. And the next piece we need is the front ramp. What I'm gonna do is actually to make this a little easier to nail this in place, I'm gonna take a clamp and help secure this in. It's gonna hold the board in place. The front ramp will put some glue on both sides of this, and we're gonna put it right below the lines on that you have here. So I'm gonna put some glue on. Just to snug it, and we'll get these flushed up to the front. Do one side here, shoot the nails in. And we'll 
do the other side. Right below this line. So it's flushed up right below the line. Put a few nails in. Take the clamp off. And just so I bought, I'll shoot a few more nails in these. Flip it over. Do the same thing. Okay, some of these are misfire, so I'm gonna have a few holes there. Now, make it easier on me. We're gonna take the one piece labeled rear top. It's gonna fit right on top of here, so I need to flush it with the top and the rear. Put some glue on both sides. Flush the top and the rear, and I'll shoot a few nails in. Inside, and the same thing here, flush this up. The hive was actually gonna sit on the, this would be the top where the hive's, hive box sits. Okay, now that's done. Now, I'm gonna take the rear center board this is actually going to fit underneath the here and below this line. What this is, is actually the nailing flange or the stapling flange for the screen. So I'm going to hold it up topward, flush it to the back, hold it up, eyeball in the line. that one there okay and the same thing here hold it all the way up top okay that's in there now the next portion that we're gonna do is I call them screen mounts three-quarter inch pieces they're actually gonna fit between the front ramp and the rear here so I actually would change the nails out in my staple, my nailer. I'm gonna put inch and a quarter ones in. All right, ready? We'll put a bead of glue right below the line. And then we're gonna take the screen mount boards and fit these in. Actually, mine are a little bit long. Um, we're just gonna trim it down and then we'll get these installed. Okay. Got the trim down here. I'll adjust the uh, the actual dimensions on the cut sheet there. So we'll set these between, below there. Turn this around here. And I want to make sure that this is flush with here and here. It's still below the line, but it's flush. This is actually going to be a, one of the stapling uh, edges for the screen. Flip this over, and I'm gonna do the same exact thing. This should fit right between here. Thus, take some glue, put it right below the line. Fit this in. Screen mount board. Flush it up. The rear here, and the ramp, and shoot this in. Okay, now we put the, the guides in. From the rear of this here, I measure up, I'm gonna go about an inch and five eighths. So I'm gonna take a stick roller measure uh, and measure an inch and five eighths up. Inch, five eighths. Just draw a mark here. Thing up. There. And now gives me an area here to eyeball and we're gonna put in the rear guides. Okay. 
So I got last three pieces are uh, two bottom guides and the under ramp piece here. So we're gonna take this under ramp, this bottom guide, and we're gonna put a bead of glue on here. Now, looking through here, I don't want the end of this protruding above here. This is where the chloroplast is gonna fit. So I want this to sit here, right below that, and the other one right at the mark, the line that we just made, the inch and five eighths. And we'll shoot the inch and quarter nails in. Okay, I got this thing clipped over. We're gonna use the other bottom guide and do the same thing. Put a bead of glue on. Make sure that it, where the rear of the chloroplast goes is not above that area there. And at the mark line, and then shoot the inch and quarter nails. Okay, the final piece we need is I call it the under ramp. It's actually gonna fit underneath this ramp here. It's gonna be the stop guide for the chloroplast screen. So make sure this thing fits here. We're good, a little snug, it's fine here. We'll put a bead of glue on each of these sides. And we're gonna change the nails out. I'm gonna have to put the two inch nails back in, but it'll be the last nails we gotta put in for this. As you can see, it fits and closes this off here. Push this down. We're gonna change the nails out real quick. And then we'll put some nails in. All right, the wooden portion of the uh, high base is done. It didn't take that long to put together here. Um, so you got the ramp here in the back. The chloroplast, as you can see. Fits right in into the bottom there. It's secured. So we're gonna put some, we're gonna, so that's how that works there. The guides hold this in place there and doesn't move out of there. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a piece of, uh, eighth inch or number eight hardware cloth. Um, the dimensions are 17 and three quarter inches by 14 and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that. I'm gonna have to remove my roll. So there's a roll of hardware cloth that I was explaining in my, in my other video. So let me uh, unravel this, cut the hardware cloth, and I'll show you how to install that. Now I've got our my um, eighth inch hardware cloth cut to 17 and three quarters by 14 and a half. The dimensions will be in the cut sheet on the description that I said before. What I'm gonna do is set this in the front here. Now to adhere this, I'm gonna use a staple gun. You can use your standard, uh, there's a Stanley staple gun. Um, using the T50 staples, um, half inch, use power shot. Um, I like this Aero PT50 pneumatic one. Um, I'm using a lot, especially on my next project that I'll explain here a little bit later. Uh, but we'll go ahead and get this started here. So, I've got this about centered in the front here, and I'm gonna start at the front, and I'm gonna put some staples here. So, start with the center and go up to the sides. Okay, from there, turn this around. Push it out a little bit and just trying to tighten up the screen and we're going to staple the rear starting with the middle and pushing out and the same thing on the other side turn to the sides here staple these in start with center There we go. 
And other than that, it's done. Um, other than some wood putty and two coats of paint, um, exterior grade paint, uh, that's pretty much it for this high base here. Um, screen, uh, this taunt, this burrow will fall right through this here. Plenty of ventilation in the summer for polar hives. Um, you want a, the chloroplast board here. Um, Two-fold thing can be used. I put some cooking spray on there, and when I insert it in here, Varroa that falls off the bees after a treatment, especially if you're doing an oxalic acid treatment, you want to put this board in here. Um, I'll spray it with some cooking spray to, so any mites that fall off fall down there and they can't move in the cooking spray, and it's easy to clean off or wipe off here. Um, and also, it helps protect um, or prevents the gas from escaping out of the bottom of the hive here. But also in the fall and winter and early spring, it's your bottom board to secure it to help keep the uh, the cold air in the hive. So this one here is not all the way down here, but it'll move forward there. Um, let's see, let's see here. The uh, this a medium high body here because I use ten frame equipment. So this box here is built for ten frames. Um, if you do eight frame, just you have to adjust the measurements to work for work for you. Um, but this is for 10 frame equipment since this is what I use majority of the time there. Um, this is a medium box, deep box, still the same dimensions there, but you can see it still works. Um, this space here, you can use it for, enter, uh, use it for your um, front feeders, your board and entrance feeders, your big plastic feeders that fit inside there. Um, if you want to put an uh, entrance reducer in, in there, you can do that. I prefer when I put a board in here that I just cut a piece of wood and stick it in the front for that. But that's pretty much it for this project here on the high base. This is what I, my current design, my current style. Um, I was pretty much any, uh, it was really cost effective for me. I says I was able to take four um, one by six by six boards that I paid three dollars a piece for, and was able to cut enough material, almost a majority of material for five high bases. I had to take some other scrap wood from my three quarter inch boards there to make those work out there, but that's just scrap lumber that I keep out. So roughly $12, $13 for five hive bases, a um, few pieces of, uh, or a piece of screen, um, 36 inch wide, there's two screens for uh, 17 and a half or almost 18 inches there. So it's about a foot and a half, I mean, two bases. So I mean, we're talking a few, another uh, few dollars for that. Uh, glue and staples, which isn't anything, and the chloroplast boards here. Um, I've sourced mine from, you can buy it from sign sign shops who make political signs. Um, you can find them, use political signs after the election season. If you're not, don't take them from somebody, you can ask the people who have them, um, if you can have them for your purpose there. Um, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, soda dealers, maybe beer, beer dealers when they make the signs for the exterior signs there. When the sale's over, they may be done with the sign. You can probably get this free utilizing that. Um, you can buy, I bought a four by eight sheet from Home Depot. Um, I can't remember exactly how much I paid for it, but uh, cut it to fit the, the work for your dimensions there. Usually this is pretty much it. It's these high bases here, and if, sometimes it's about 24 inches thick out here. I'll cut this piece off the front of here, and I'll stick it in front of my mouse guards um, to help reduce the front entrance during the winter months. Um, but that's it for this project here. Uh, other than some other ideas I have, the next building project that I'll probably show you is how to build the Snellgrove board. Uh, Snellgrove, uh, if you see my other videos here talking about how the Snellgrove method, um, anti-swarm method, it helps, I can't say anti-swarm method, but um, helps reduce your swarms. It's a high manipulation. You get you still keep all your bee, majority of your bees if, if it's done correctly. Um, still get all your honey stores there and you get a, a queen and you usually it'll produce one, maybe more queens from your own stock from them from your strong hives there. But you can build another nuke off or just have the queen put in your queen bag. Um, I've already got the when I had the lumber out, I went ahead and cut the pieces for that. So that'd be pretty simple showing you how that. I just got to buy a few more components from the from, from skew, some screws and some uh, little eye screws for the uh, the pivot doors for that. But I'll show you uh, all that when it's time to be done. Um, for me, this is a video up here. I finally made my 200 subscribers. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, you guys subscribing to me shows that you guys have an interest and want to see what I have going on. Um, 
come this spring, I've already got phone calls or some notifications about cutouts that I plan to do uh, or help out with, um, which I plan on filming those. Uh, I'm already getting set up for my swarm traps and swarm locations, fair of those going on. Um, trying to stay ahead of the game here. This time frame, we're still cold. Um, I can build up some of the equipment I need. If it's excess equipment, I can put it in storage here. That's why I like to build more than one or build more than two. If I have the wood and I can build it, I'll do so. Um, I showed you a, a bargain how to build a really sturdy B -ba high base. If you go buy a high base with all these components here, you're probably paying between uh, $25 to $32 for select wood and everything else there. Bees live in trees. They don't live in select wood. So um, it's all about shavings and uh, showing you how I do things, um, showing you these concepts. So until the next video, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and um, looking to do more. Thank you very much. God bless. Bye-bye.